Welcome to the case based learning section of our website. This section, which is limited to the pro members, attempts to address conceptual and clinical questions that come up regularly during routine and not so routine clinical cases. There are basic or advanced clinical situations that the real world endoclinicians and the faculty or their guests may introduce in this area. So I'm very excited about this section as it is highly clinical and hopefully very relevant to your daily clinical practice. We plan to update this area regularly, so please message me or the other real world endo faculty and let us know what kind of topics and areas you're interested in, and we're going to try to make content to fulfill those areas. Okay, now let's take a look at this first clinical case for the case-based learning series. This is tooth number nine, and it's a necrotic tooth which has been uh, proposed to have non-surgical root canal therapy. And uh, we're going to use the basic endosequence instrumentation and basic hydraulic condensation technique. So now we're looking at the radiograph of this tooth number nine. As you can see, there is a three unit bridge present from number seven to nine, number eight is missing. And uh, the first thing that comes to mind here is the poor fit of the bridge. Oftentimes, we go about doing our diagnostic tests, and clearly in this tooth, following doing the pulp vitality tests, it was very clear that tooth number nine did not respond to either EPT or the thermal testing, and therefore it was found to be necrotic. However, we often forget what the cause of the necrosis is. This, root, this bridge was about 10 years old, and apparently it was not a very good fit, because as you can see here on the side, we have open margins, around both abutments. And this is the kind of case in which when you have open margins, you will end up having leakage, and the leakage causing the pulp to die as a result of bacterial contamination underneath the crown. So a situation like this, we never can recommend to a patient to just have a root canal and then fill the access. It's very important to inform the patient about the condition that caused the root canal, which is a leaky restoration, and make sure that the patient follows up this root canal procedure with a new bridge. So it's obviously disappointing for a lot of patients to replace this bridge, but it's really incumbent on us as clinicians to inform our patients about this need and convince them that a new bridge is necessary following the root canal therapy, or else your root canal will fail a couple years down the line because you haven't really addressed the source of the infection, which is the leakage around the bridge. So before we go ahead and uh, do the procedure clinically, I just wanted to go over the endosequence technique very briefly to introduce you to this uh, filing uh, system so that you can understand and follow up on what I'm doing in the uh, x-ray. The endosequence technique was developed about uh, 10 or so years ago. And uh, it's a very popular technique. It's very efficient. And it follows a very simple concept. All you're trying to do is you're trying to get a master file, whatever the size it is, here in this, is, this, this picture is showing a size 40, down to your working length. Once you have a master file, then the system allows you to have a matching paper point, a matching gutta percha that has now been coated with a layer of bioceramics and it reacts with the sealer. And if you need, they also have a matching post for this shape that allows you to skip any post drills so that you can actually have your final master file here to be your post drill because this shape will match uh, your uh, master file. And they also have the uh, core buildup, a reinforced composite core material that you can use. So it's a comprehensive system. It's very efficient. And that's what I really like about it. And that's why I use it. So what's also beautiful about it is the versatility that it has. The endosequence system has sizes 15 through 50 in 06 taper. And the blue stopper here designates an 06 taper. And then a size 15 through 80 in 04 taper. And 04 uh, stoppers are red stoppers. Now, I must say that I have really moved from 06 tapers to 04 tapers, and in my practice, 100% of the cases, I'm only using 04 taper because I believe that it saves a lot of coronal dentin, and my imp the important part of endo for success is to have a larger apical preparation, not necessarily a larger coronal preparation. 
But now let's take a look and see how this versatility is put together in the form of procedural packs. To make the process easier, the Indosequence system has four files per package that has been put together as a size small, medium, large, and then there is an extra large as well. And sizes 15 through 30 are small, 25 through 40 are medium, and 35 through 50 are large, and then 55 through 80 are extra large. This allows you to use a procedural pack for a given case and know what set of files you have to use to complete that case. And the way you would know which procedural pack to open for any given case is through this first file called the expediter file. If when you open an access opening and you put your expediter file in there, if it doesn't go in there or if it's, it barely goes in there, you're dealing with a size small package. If it goes in there about halfway from the flutes, then you're dealing with a medium size package and then you open that uh, pack up. Or if it goes in there and it's fairly loose, then you use a large pack. But for the most part, I must say that on your molars, you will end up using primarily small and medium packs. For your premolars, you will end up using small, medium, or large packs. And in, in your anterior teeth, you will end up using either medium or large packs. That's just a rule of thumb. And this slide shows you the algorithm by which you can get to the right procedural pack for a given case. You start the case by using a hand file, here a size 10, just to make sure you have some kind of a patent canal that you're dealing with. Then you can use the expediter file, and the expediter file, depending on the length that it goes to, then you will end up choosing either small, medium, or large packs. In the example that I'm going to show you an anterior tooth, we're basically going to go to a large pack because it, as you saw on the radiograph, it's a fairly large canal. So I'm going to be dealing with a size 50 through 35. And the way we use the endo sequence file is through a crown down technique. And what that means is that instead of going from the smallest size file to the larger size, you actually start from the largest and go to the smallest. You start by the 50, 45, 40, and then 35. So uh, your goal is to incrementally remove a little bit of dentin among each files and move your way down. If as soon as you get down to the, uh, uh, to the apex, then you know which file has reached the apex first, that becomes your first file to the apex. You can either use that as your master file, or if you feel that you still have some space, then you can actually go one size higher, one or two sizes higher than uh, the first file that reaches the apex. And the motion for using the endo sequence is with this rhythm technique of one, two, three strokes, and then you take the file out, and then you wipe it. It's very important to keep the chip space clean. So after one, two, or three strokes, you have to take the file out, and wipe the file. It's a very efficient file and this technique will work well if you keep the chip space clean.